The Third Crusade was the most important discussed crusade in history. The battle was fought both on battleground and with mental tactics. The battle was neither called lost nor win. It is either much praised or criticized. Hello friends I am Hebron Peters. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part 3 of my series on Crusades which is Third Crusade. Links of my previous parts of First and Second Crusades are given below. Kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment. The Second Crusade had effectively ended with the complete failure to take Damascus in Syria in 1148. The various Muslim states in the Middle East then realized that the once feared Western Knights could be defeated and the precarious existence of the Crusader-held territories, the Latin East, was starkly highlighted. All that was needed now was a unification of Muslim forces and this was provided by one of the greatest of all medieval rulers, Saladin the Sultan of Egypt and Syria. Saladin, the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty in Egypt, took control of Damascus in 1174 and Aleppo in 1183. Saladin then shocked the world by defeating the army of the Kingdom of Jerusalem and its Latin allies at the Battle of Haddon in 1187. Thus, Saladin was able to take control of such cities as Acre, Tiberias, Caesarea, Nazareth, Jaffa, and even, the holiest of holies itself, Jerusalem. Pope Gregory VIII only reigned for a few months in 1187 but, in October of that year, he made a lasting impact on history by calling for yet another crusade to win back Jerusalem and such lost holy relics as the True Cross. Gregory VIII, issued a crusade bull and called for fasting and penitence. Nothing less than a repeat of the remarkable feat of the first crusade would do. No fewer than three monarchs took up the Pope's challenge, the Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick I Barbarossa, King of Germany, Philip II of France and Richard I of England. Frederick I Barbarossa was the first king to mobilize, and he traveled with his army by land through Thrace in the spring of 1190. The Byzantine Emperor Isaac II Angelos was understandably wary of this Western army passing through his territory while, from the other side, the Westerners were deeply suspicious of Isaac's new alliance with Saladin, a feeling based on some reality as Isaac did try to impede the Crusaders' progress towards the Middle East. When Frederick occupied Adrianople in Thrace, the Byzantines became more helpful to their fellow Christians but the Emperor was no doubt relieved once the Germans had passed on into Anatolia. Then disaster struck on June 10, 1190. The Holy Roman Emperor drowned in an accident, falling from his horse into the river Salaf in southern Cilicia still on his way to the Holy Land. Frederick's death, and then a calamitous outbreak of dysentery, resulted in most of his army being eliminated or deciding to trudge back home in grief. The crusade would have to rely on the English and French armies, temporary allies who were not very fond of each other at the best of times. Although a few German troops made it to Acre in the Middle East, the loss of Frederick's authority and experience would prove to be significant for the crusade as a whole. Meanwhile, Richard I took the sea route to the Middle East. The experienced campaigner, as meticulous as ever, had swung his entire kingdom's resources towards the campaign amassing a fleet of 100 ships and 60,000 horses. On his way, Richard captured Messina on Sicily in 1190, and when the king's army grouped for the first time on the island in April 1191, there were 17,000 soldiers ready for action. The English king knew full well that the make-or-break factor for any campaign was logistics and he set about ensuring he had a good line of supply by next capturing Cyprus. Officially still Byzantine, the island now had a rebel leader, Isaac Komnos, who had proclaimed himself its independent ruler. Richard proved unstoppable and, with the rather tame excuse that the locals had not treated some shipwrecked crusaders very kindly, Cyprus was taken in May 1191. 
the island's inhabitants were forced to pay a 50% tax on all possessions to further boost the Crusader King's campaign coffers. The Crusaders would govern the island, subsequently used as a supply base for armies on their way to the Middle East, until the Venetians took over in 1571. Meanwhile in France, Philip II had amassed his army of 650 knights, 1,300 squires and an even larger number of infantry. This army also sailed to the Levant, this time thanks to Genos ships who would take it to Acre. The Third Crusade was certainly developing into a truly pan-European military escapade. The first major battle of the campaign was at Acre, on the coast of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The armies of Richard I and Philip II by early June 1191, were in place and ready to take the city. The city was finally captured on July 12, 1191. According to legend, Richard had been ill at the time, perhaps struck down by scurvy, although he had retainers carry him on a stretcher so that he could fire at the enemy battlements with his crossbow. Richard then rather blemished his good king reputation when he ordered 2,500 prisoners to be executed. Philip was obliged to return home in August 1191 due to political problems in Flanders which threatened his throne. Thus, from the original three kings, the Crusader army now had only one. Still, Richard was probably the greatest general of his generation, and the campaign, despite its setbacks, was off to a fine start. The Crusader army next set its sights on Jaffa, the vital port which supplied Jerusalem. On September 7, 1191, on the plain of Arsav, the two armies clashed in a running battle, the crusaders being careful to follow the coast and so leave only one flank of their column exposed. The crusaders won the battle but the Muslim losses were not substantial, Saladin having had no choice but to withdraw to the relative safety of the forest which bordered the plain. After Arsav, Saladin decided not to risk open battle with Richard again, who quickly recaptured Jaffa and established it as his base of operations. Richard next re-established Christian control of the coast and refortified Ascalon to the south. Twice Richard led the Crusaders to Jerusalem, yet on both occasions he was forced to retreat after coming within sight of the Holy City. Without control of the hinterland, the king knew that he could not hold Jerusalem for long. Although tactically sound, Richard's refusal to lay siege to the city was bitterly unpopular among the rank and file. Richard had marched to within sight of Jerusalem, but he knew that even if he could storm the city's formidable fortifications, his army had been so reduced by the various battles over the past two years that he would most likely not be able to hold it against an inevitable counter-attack. Following his victory at Arsav, Richard took Jaffa and established his new headquarters there. He offered to begin negotiations with Saladin, who sent his brother, Aladil also known as Safadin to the Franks, to meet with Richard. Negotiations, which included an attempt to marry Richard's sister Joan to Aladil, failed, and Richard marched to Ascalon, which had been recently demolished by Saladin. The Muslims still controlled Jerusalem and Saladin still had his army intact. It was something of a stalemate and, in any case, as with Philip, domestic affairs in England necessitated Richard's prompt return home to safeguard his throne in October 1192. The whole crusade project was effectively abandoned. No crusader army would ever get as close to Jerusalem again. Richard was intending to return to England when he heard the news that Saladin and his army had captured Jaffa. Richard and a small force of little more than 2,000 men went to Jaffa by sea in a surprise attack. They stormed Jaffa from their ships and the Iubids, who had been unprepared for a naval attack, were driven from the city. On September 2, 1192, following his defeat at Jaffa, Saladin was forced to finalize a treaty with Richard providing that Jerusalem would remain under Muslim control, but allowing unarmed Christian pilgrims and traders to visit the city. The city of Ascalon was a contentious issue, as it threatened communication between Saladin's dominions in Egypt and Syria, it was eventually agreed that Ascalon, with its defenses demolished, be returned to Saladin's control. Richard departed the Holy Land on October 9, 1192. 
neither side was entirely satisfied with the results of the war. Though Richard's victories had deprived the Muslims of important coastal territories and re-established a viable Frankish state in Palestine, many Christians in the Latin West felt disappointed that he had elected not to pursue the recapture of Jerusalem. Likewise, many in the Islamic world felt disturbed that Saladin had failed to drive the Christians out of Syria and Palestine. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment, the series is continue. God bless you.